Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for being here today. Um, I've prepared a statement because I want to make sure actually that I can get through it. Um, this summer, uh, I will resign as the mayor of the city of Racine. I have accepted a new position as the president of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative now that David Ulrich will be retiring. As you can imagine, the decision was not an easy one. I had a long conversation with my family. And I think the time is right and the cause, the cause is right for me to accept this new challenge. Ever since I was entrusted by the citizens of Racine to be their mayor over eight years ago, I believed in my heart that water was and is the next major political and economic battleground for this country and for our future. The new administration in Washington has made it clear that we will have significant challenges ahead of us. Flint, Michigan is merely a warning of the future water problems. And these problems will be confronting this generation as well as the next. But it's our duty to solve them rather than pass them on to our kids. As you can see from my work now and in the past that I'm very, very passionate about water and just as passionate as I am about what we've done here in the city of Racine. My work for the city will not change, however. I will be working until the very last day that uh, I am here at the city in my long hours and weekend work and the major projects that we have ahead of us. The city council will determine the date for the election in tandem with my resignation date and we will have a special election likely this fall and I'll direct all those questions to our uh, city attorney and our staff. I'm comfortable with the decision because I know that I have a very strong, dedicated and professional staff. Not only the public sector, but the private sector has been working with us in tandem to build a better Racine and together we've done that and they will continue to move the city forward. We have had significant efforts in economic development, attracting new businesses, lowering unemployment, lowering crime, and creating the building blocks for the future of the city of Racine. And there's a lot more in store. My scope of influence will simply grow. And part of my decision process was the opportunity to work at a higher level, to work on issues of water, to help pre uh, prepare and prevent and allow clean and affordable water to everyone. After all, we are a great city on a great lake. I want to truly thank the people of Racine. They've given me this opportunity and I feel blessed to have had it. We have ded dedicated professionals who work tirelessly here every day for our citizens. Most of all, I want to thank my family who has always supported me in my effort as mayor, have given up a lot of their time for me to do my job. So, today and later this summer, we begin a new chapter. But it's one that I'm comfortable with and one that I look forward to. So I want to open it up to questions. What, would I, what was the deciding factor, really, to you? You said you had, had a lot of thought and process went into it. What was kind of the deciding factor to, to move forward and to have a new challenge. When we started eight years ago, I created a plan for the city. And when I look back at that plan, knowing that our hotel convention center is in good hands and I think they will come out with a good project for the city, once that gets moving, roughly 98 to 99 percent of that plan is done. We came to do something for Racine, which was turn the city around um, from where we were to where we are is exactly what we said we were going to do, and we did it. And we did it with the help and support of everyone. But when I look at the issues regarding water, I sit on not only the Coastal Management Commission in the state of Wisconsin, but the U.S. Conference of Mayors Water Council and the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative, and I'm the only mayor in the country that does that. You can recognize very clearly that the challenges that we're facing when I said Flint was just the beginning, it is just the beginning. If we don't get serious about our infrastructure and our water and start changing the way we do things, the challenges are going to be daily. So I know how important this is because I've seen it firsthand. From the coasts to the south to the north to the Great Lakes, 
and globally what's going on in the water. This is the next issue. So they've asked me to help work with them to make sure we meet those challenges and solve those problems before it's too late. And that's what I'm out to do. So they came to you, you didn't go out seeking it, they offered it to you? And they actually brought the issue to me, I was not seeking it, and uh, once we started talking, the process went actually very quickly, uh, far quicker than I would have ever imagined. Um, I feel honored that they asked me, uh, but uh, given the timing and where everything is at right now, this is a new challenge that I think is not only protecting the scene, but it's actually going to be protecting the Great Lakes and all of our water. Mayor, you say that um, a lot of people don't realize that this is the next crisis. First of all, why do you think people don't realize it? And second of all, you know, in a couple of sentences, what is the root of the problem? Well, the root of the problem is we're making decisions based on the next election and not our next generation. We're using water like it's a resource that is always going to be there and always going to be recharged and regenerated. The Great Lakes only recharges at 1% per year. There are, with the Waukesha decision, there may be up to 125 people or cities trying to tap into the Great Lakes now. You cannot refill the Great Lakes. And the way we are talking currently about high capacity wells in the state of Wisconsin, you simply cannot, and Israel is the perfect example of this, water is precious. And if you treat it that way, it is not only affordable for people, but it's available. We have cities right now that are on the brink of drying up. When you look at the Lake Mead out in, out in the West on how low that is, I would have thought that this country would say we have an obvious problem and we better do something about it or else. And yet still, very few measures are being discussed. I will tell you I am very happy that the administration is talking about an infrastructure bill. And a couple of weeks ago when I was out in Washington, I said to the, uh, to the leadership, we as the mayors can help you solve this problem. And the way we solve it is you don't ha handle transportation infrastructure separately from water or utility infrastructure. You blend all three together. You get a far greater dollar value for your dollar, but more importantly, you rebuild the infrastructure faster. If we don't do that, we are going to be paying for it in the long run, and the price is simply unaffordable for this country. So we're begging the administration to work with us on infrastructure issues and rebuilding our water infrastructure today because there's nobody better at doing that than mayors. So that people don't keep tapping into the Great Lakes? Is that the They're using water right now at a level that is unsustainable for this country and for this planet. And if you look at the NASA satellites of our aquifers, I'm, I'm trying to get to these issues now so people don't have to figure out when they turn on their tap that there's no water coming out and it's not going to keep coming out. So why do we have to wait that long? We have people who have been talking about this story for decades, and yet we refuse to look at it. So water is a precious commodity. It's the one thing on this planet that you cannot live without. You have three days without water, and the likelihood is you'll die. So why are we not having this conversation now? The back and forth and the political nature of what's happening in Washington, D.C., is not focusing on the big issues, and we need to focus on the big issues. So what, uh, you say you, you won't be leaving until summer, um, and you'll stay on, but is there anything that, in between now and then, that you'd like to accomplish, or that you see as you would like to have done before you leave office? Well, there's a couple of things that we're working on right now that we're, we're very excited about, and we want to get to fruition. Number one, we obviously want to get a plan together for the hotel convention center. Uh, because we think that that is a catalyst development for bringing new development into Racine. Uh, we have a couple of residential developers that are looking uh, in the city of Racine to do some work with us. We'd like to get those to fruition, and we're talking to a couple new companies about locating in Racine, and we want to get those done as well. Those are just a couple of the things that I've got on my desk, and if you look behind you, you'll see there's a whole lot of files out there and a whole lot of work to do. So uh, we're not going to slow down one bit. We're going to keep working very, very hard because that's what they pay me to do. And uh, I'm going to do that because I think we want to make sure that the transition is simple and clean and easy, but that they keep running with the torch that we've created. And thanks to my team here, the, the workers and staff and the public and private sector here, the torch is pretty big. So we're looking forward to it. Did uh, bringing on a new administrator have anything to do with the timing of this? Or? No, actually, the, the timing of this, uh, the board didn't decide um, on this until last Monday. So the timing on this, uh, while I was going through this entire city administrator search, we didn't know that there was a there. 
So uh, it's, it's all been very quick, but in total transparency to everyone, including the council and a new council president that will have to be decided on after the election, we had decided to make sure that everybody knew what was going on and had a clear understanding of uh, what we were, our challenges were ahead of us and what we were looking at doing. Will you be relocating your household? Absolutely not. That was part of the package. That, uh, <coughs> while I'll be working in Chicago, there's a great thing called the train, and I'll be taking it every day. Um, and uh, nope, not planning on leaving Racine, and as I'll tell the next mayor who comes on board, happy to help out in any way I can. Uh, I, I will not, like Tom Friedel, I will not be joining 20 or 30 boards after, uh, after this. Um, I, want to, I want to spend a little time with my family, and they deserve it. Will you be endorsing a successor? Well, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, there's some folks here today that are going to be talking to you. Um, we'll take a look at that and see how that goes. Yeah. yeah. When do you begin your new position? Uh, we'll be working with the council to determine the date of the transition. Uh, then they'll have to look at, uh, you know, I'll have to put out a formal transition date of when I'll be resigning. And then the council will look to uh, start the new election uh, process from there. And so also, so also, we'll see as soon as we can. Yeah. And you also said that they reached out to you. How long was that process as far as this? It was under two months. Yeah, it was quick. Anybody else? Do you expect a robust battle for your uh, position down the road? Do you expect multiple candidates? I don't know if you can beat the 13 that we had when I ran. Uh, that was that was one heck of a primary. Uh, I still I still to this day remember those debates and thinking to myself, we're going to get through one question here if we're lucky. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, the, the fortunate part is mayors are the one place in this country where you can get things done, and I think that all the mayors in this nation have proven that that. Outside of the, the, you know, the grenade throwing that's going on at the different levels of government, the mayors, we all work together across party lines, and we work to make sure that we build a better city. Um, I think, uh, unfortunately, some people see what happens um, out there and, and the amount of abuse that they get, and that will you know, probably get some people to, to back off of running for the position. Um, I hope there are uh, people running, and, and you know, we'll see where it goes. I just hope that they are willing to take the same... Uh, you know, the same uh, ideals, values that this city has incorporated and run with those. Because, like I said, we have a great team here. We have amazing people, and I've hired most of them myself. And uh, they've done wonderful work, and I know they will continue to do wonderful work. Uh, and I hope the next mayor takes that into account, because it's an amazing team. Anybody else? Okay, um, there is somebody here that uh, would like to, to say a few words. So, uh, State Representative Corey Mason. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you to John Dickert for his uh, service and tenure as mayor of the city of Racine. I'm here today to announce that I intend to run for mayor when the vacancy opens up this summer. Uh, I, I love this city. I've lived here almost all my life. I've had the honor of serving this community in the state legislature for 11 years now. Uh, and I would be uh, thrilled and honored to have the opportunity to, to serve this community further as its mayor. Uh, <clears throat> I see myself sort of picking up the torch where, where this administration has taken the city. Uh, the issues remain the same. We've accomplished a great deal, but there are challenges that remain. But I will continue to work on the issues that I think are critically important to this community. There's a lot of them, but just to name a few, uh, lifting up the middle class and making sure we've got a chance at economic development uh, and going hand in hand with that is protecting and restoring our waters, uh, Lake Michigan and Root River most notably. Uh, and I'm somebody who wants to embrace the diversity of this community and all that that has to offer. So uh, lots of, of news to, to come following this. This has been a, a very short timeline, uh, but uh, when I heard the news, uh, I was thrilled and excited to, to put my hat in the ring and, and thrilled to announce to all of you today that I intend to run for mayor of Racine. Any questions? If elected, would you resign from the assembly? Yeah, I, I think we've got to figure out what the timing of that all looks like, but it, it, I don't intend to do both jobs. I, I think it's, uh, this is a big job, and I think uh, it requires your full attention. Um, there's this extra wrinkle of uh, lines potentially being redrawn in the legislature this year that uh, may go into the timing. So there's a timeline we have to figure out here in terms of when John vacates uh, being mayor and when the election is called and, and when the lines are drawn. But 
it would be my intention to be a full-time mayor. So what would you hope to accomplish and would it, how much different would it be than John's kind of agenda? Sure. I mean, there'll be plenty of time to talk about all, all these things. But broadly speaking, uh, you know, we need a strong middle class. We have a, a lot of, uh, we have a great manufacturing sector here, but those are high skill manufacturing jobs. We've got to make sure the next generation of workers is, is ready to do those, those jobs. We've got to make sure that we're protecting our waters and that we're doing the work that uh, we've been working on to restore the Great Lakes. Certainly I've been involved in the Root Works project since its inception and had a great partner in the city to try to bring as much of that to fruition as possible. Uh, but, you know, there's going to be lots of time to talk about what the challenges are and what we hope to accomplish. Uh, and I look forward to that in the months to come. Mayor Dicker just talked about 12 opponents. When he yeah. Anticipate 12. Minutes. Well, it's, it's a free country and anybody can run, right? Uh, so I, I certainly don't want to, um, you know, claim that uh, we want to have an opportunity to do that. I've been privileged to represent at one time or another, after, you know, with redistricting, 90% of the constituents in this community. I have a relationship with uh, this community. I know this community well. I hear the concerns on a daily basis. I feel like I'm well poised to take that on. Uh, and so I would encourage people to get behind my candidacy, but I also, it's a free country. If somebody else wants to run and thinks they do a good job, obviously that's ultimately for the voters to decide. Anybody else going to step up to the podium? I don't know. <laughs> All right. We, we, we checked and we have no one. So. All right. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks, everybody. If anybody has uh, questions or want to do follow-ups, Gretchen is here for you. So thanks, thanks everybody, for coming. Appreciate it. Okay. Let me see.